So I just listened to this video from an atheist Drew of Genetically Modified Skeptic is his channel. And it was kind of a video that he made sort of in response to a conversation that we had uh, last Monday, or at least inspired by that conversation. And we sat down for about two hours and we had a really nice, really cool conversation. I was asking questions about how he became an atheist and all sorts of different things. But there was a part, and this is what made Drew unusual in my experience, where I asked him, and I'm going to have a bunch of atheists on my channel in the future, and I'm going to ask all of them some variation of this question, because this is very interesting to me. Now, he is the first person I've ever encountered that answered in the affirmative. Did you have any experiences that you would describe as spiritual or connected to God? And he answered, yes. Huh? <laughs> you did? Why are you an atheist? Now, this is where it gets weird, or not weird in the sense of weird, hard for me to understand. Now, I've been doing this thing on Twitter for about two years, a little over two years. And most of the atheists that I interact with are former Christians. To one degree or another, they're either former hardcore fundamentalists or they're former mellow fundamentalists or they're former kind of sort of Christians. But for the most part, they are former Christians. And routinely, when I ask them, did you have any experiences that you would describe as spiritual, they, they came up short. Now, what makes Drew unusual is he did not come up short. He starts describing experience and then he elaborates on some of the experiences in the video that are actually fairly intense. And he describes them subjectively as fairly intense and fairly con connected to God. And as far as he was concerned at the time, they were actually connected to God. So yeah, wrap your brain around it. How, why? The, the question that I asked him then, and I ask again, is why are you an atheist? And just to give you a different perspective. One of the people who I've been in contact with, who was actually a good friend of mine for a while, for about a year, I don't keep in contact with him as much, was an atheist. A new atheist, like Drew, three years in the making or something. But there was a lot more agony in him. Like, Drew seems to be relatively calm with his decision to walk away from church and walk with God. Relatively at peace with it. If not at total peace with it. That's one of the things I commented on. This guy was, in, was agonizing over it completely, left, right, and center. Um, partially because he, he had never come out and told his family that he was an atheist, but also partially because of, you know, there was a lot of guilt about he'd been raised Christian till, you know, for as far back as he can remember, and there was a lot of guilt there. But had he had an experience, now it's not unusual for me to hear from a, a former fundamentalist Christian who has become an atheist. I've heard this sentence before. If I could have stayed in the church, if I could have had some sort of organic experience, emotional connection that I felt was real, I would have stayed. That's what this guy told me. That's what a couple other people who are atheists, prominent atheists, mind you, have said. Or their own words. If I could have had a powerful, connected experience, a la what happened to Drew, I would have stayed. And it seems to me like the experiences that happened to him, most people would have been cool with that. They would have said, you know, I'm in. I will stay in the fold. These are powerful experiences. These are real to me. Because they seemed real to Drew at the time. So, the mystery presents itself. Why does he become an atheist? His answer... I mean, you can go and look. At the, if you listen to the, the, the conversation with me and Drew, we start talking about this at about 40 minutes in. And then go listen to his video. But give this some real thought because it's a deeper question and it's more mysterious than you think. Most of the atheists who were former Christians wrestled with the idea of walking away with God. And it took them a long time and there was some agony to it. Had they had experiences like Drew had that, they, that were real to them, they would have stayed. P pretty much promise you they would have stayed. Now, he says those, those experiences in his estimation now are emotional, powerful experiences that were subjective. He looked for some sort of, I guess, outside objective verification that those experiences actually were God. Now, most people wouldn't do that. Most people, this is where it gets mysterious. For most people, and I'm trying to think, 
I mean, one of the things that I used to say when I, when I was doing, when I was talking to atheists at the beginning, is that my experiences could be scientifically verified, given, you know, the fact that I'm not insane. <laughs> You're like, well, you are insane. No, I'm not, I'm really not. Now, the, what the ways that are be scientifically verified would be some of the ways that he's talking about. You know, it is an experience that is powerfully subjective, that it has actually happened to you. Now, whether it is actually the living God connecting to you, obviously you're an atheist, and obviously Drew would answer it now as no, it's not. But most people wouldn't need that extra confirmation. Now, maybe that's where Drew and I differ. Maybe that's how we're wired differently. I mean, obviously there's profound differences between us. I'm a Christian, he's an atheist. That's a pretty big chasm in worldview, I would say. But what was interesting to me, and I can't quite wrap my brain around it, um, is the experiences that he describes seem real to me. And they seem like they were real to him. So why did he then go, I need to verify this outside of myself? Because 99 people out of 100 wouldn't do that. And most, some of the atheists I know who are atheists now wouldn't need to do that. They wouldn't, they wouldn't have wanted to do that. That would have been enough. They would have said, okay, this is cool. I'm in. So I don't know what to make of it. And, you know, one of the things that I was always talking as an evidence for God would be powerfully subjective experiences like what Drew is talking about. And this is why a lot of people believe in God all over the world. Um, yeah, it doesn't quite go. Then you got to go, well, that's not the, necessarily the Christian God. Okay, fine. But in my experience of just with everyday people from all walks of life that I've known and before I became a Christian, I have... I have you know, once you get on the subject of have you ever had exper spiritual experiences, the only people who I would ever meet who would answer in the negative were atheists. Every other person I'd ever meet in any walk of life. And they could be all over the map in terms of what type of, whether they were a Christian, whether they were this or that. You say, do you believe in God? And they would say yes. And you go, why? And they go, well, one time. And they describe some sort of thing that they would ascribe to supernatural agency. They just, they give you a story. And those stories would be similar to Drew's. Now, Drew's were actually more intense than most of them. So that's what makes this mysterious and uh, very interesting. So, to be continued, I will have him on my show again, and we'll see, we'll see what more he has to say on the subject. And I will have his... His little minion, his little Frankenstein monster. Yeah, he's got a little Frankenstein monster out there. It's objectively Dan. He's like a couple years younger than him, and he's even more hungry to be an atheist. He's going to be on my show in two.